Mm. All right, I have to do a PSA, public service announcement, really quickly. I did an inexcusable act uh, in the process of filming this video. So uh, this is a video about the Jet 9 from Niner. I know that. I videotaped the bike. I made a thumbnail. Uh, so basically, I was watching the video after I uploaded it the, the first time. I didn't publish it, but I uploaded it. And I, uh, I was watching the video, and all of a sudden, I noticed that uh, every time I'm looking at this bicycle, I'm calling it a RIP9. Mm. Basically, I have been very busy the past few weeks. Um, Christmas is coming. It's just getting here really fast. Uh, my, my brain didn't work. Wh whatever excuse I can come up with, I hope you guys can forgive me. This is not the RIP9. This is the Jet9. All the information is still there. It is still okay. Uh, just remember that every time I say RIP9, I mean Jet9. <laughs> I felt like such an idiot when I was watching it. And, like that whole like color just flushed out of me. Like, oh, no. Uh, but anyway, I had to at least put this preface. We are talking about the Jet 9, not the RIP 9. The biggest difference is the RIP 9 has more travel than the Jet 9. We'll chalk this up to a good learning experience. But I had to PSA this. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Uh, I love you. Let's just get to the video starting now. I actually have some interesting news today. So the bike shop has recently picked up a new brand. That brand is none other than Niner Bicycle. I'm going to give you a, I guess a first hand review, not by me, but by Keith of the, the RIP9 RDO. I was very apprehensive about Niner. I have always joked about Niner because when the brand first came out, I was like, oh, that's cool. They came out to be a 20 Niner only brand. No more 26, that's, you know, by the wayside, they weren't gonna do 27 and a half, but I always thought it was kind of a pigeonhole because if you're a 29er bike brand, that means you're only gonna do 29 mountain bikes is the way I took that, right? So no 700C, which I know technically is 29 inch. That car sounded terrible. They've since like, it is it is merged into a off-road brand. They make a stellar gravel bike that I, I really like. Besides their whole full suspension gravel bike, that one's kind of weird and wonky. And that, that's about it. But why, why did, in this pandemic time, the bike shop decide to pick up a new brand like Niner Bicycles? Well, to put it quite simply, they have bicycles. <laughs> that's the short answer of it. Keith is the first one to really own a Niner for an extended period of time. He's been riding this thing for a few months now. And just so happens, Keith is walking into the door right now as I'm pretending to see him because he's not actually here yet. they just flipped that rocker, right? I think that, I mean, I would dare say that took a four link. All right, this is so actually embarrassing. I was really excited for these, uh, this little guy right here. This is a uh, wireless lapel microphone. In my excitement to use these things, I even plugged in the headphones to make sure that it was working. Um, but the important person that it cut out was Keith. So you're stuck with me for a little bit. But basically, I'm gonna go over what Keith said, what he actually thinks about it, what he likes, what he dislikes about this Niner. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I will be more than happy to answer them. Ask them down below. I will ask Keith. The reason Keith wanted to buy this bicycle, he wanted one bike to do these endurance Pisgah races. I guess that's the best way to describe them. Endurance mountain races, not mountain bike, but they're actually taking place in the mountains. Like O-Ram, he wanted a bike for O-Ram. Uh, in O-Ram, you have a, a descent like Heartbreak, which you're gonna be going downhill for like an hour straight. Now Heartbreak, in his own words, is, is not a terrible descent by any stretch of the imagination, but when you're on hour four of a bike race, uh, that changes everything. <laughs> Oh, 
So he wanted a bike to kind of, a true trail bike, you know? Getting to this bike in particular, I think he never rode it in the stock configuration. The stock configuration, it had Fox front shock, had the stock wheels on it that were a tank, and it had SX. So talking with SRAM, SX may be getting better because they're trying to use less plastic on it because I think they know they have a problem with the derailleurs, but for the time being, I still haven't seen SX in a good light. That is making sense. Now, we're gonna be commenting mainly on the frame because what has Keith changed on this bicycle to get it race ready? Put new wheels on it that were lighter, they're carbon, put a helm on the front, for which I would love to just do a video on Cane Creek because of that, and change the entire group to something this is a little more durable. So if we just jump on what the frame is, the frame is a Niner RIP9 RDO. RDO stands for like race day optimized. And Niner has really tried to, they almost remind me of some of like the older GTs. Basically back in the day, GT really, really tried to make a bike that was a bigger full suspension bike, but it still pedaled okay uh, without that much pedal bob. Niner's kind of doing that in, the, in their own way. Uh, but one of their ways is with this race day optimized frame that does have struts in the front triangle which stiffen the thing up, which I, I like that. All of the things that Niner is doing to kind of optimize their bike for stiffness does increase the weight but I think it could potentially be a good trade-off. A few other things that I think increase the weight on it, the rockers on this thing. If you go to overhaul this, you'll notice a few things. Some of the bearings in there are double wide, like they're just wider than something like what Giant uses. And then some of them actually have two bearings in it. I think that is to stiffen up the rear end a little bit, but more importantly, it's gonna just take a lot less maintenance when you have multiple bearings taking up the, uh, the abuse that you're gonna dish out on this thing. The suspension design on it is the CVA, that is the constant varying arc. And it does have a flip chip in it. Now the constant varying arc, I even discussed this with Keith. Whenever you actually look at this thing, cause I'm used to something like an Anthem, which is what we compared this to quite a bit, an Anthem and a Trance, uh, because that's what we've ridden, right? So the constant varying arc. <laughs> a lot of times with bicycle suspension, there's, there's nothing that's been super revolutionary. It's just built upon itself ever since uh, like Dave Waggle really kind of set the standard for bicycle suspension. Now, if you look at a giant suspension, you have a rocker up here and a rocker down here. If, if you just take a quick glance at the Niner, it looks like they took this bottom rocker and just flipped it upside down and put it on the bottom of the bottom bracket. They can call it what they want, but that's what it looks like to me. Keith made a good point though, that puts all your pivot points below the bottom bracket. So I haven't looked into what that actually does with the rear end of the bike, with how it actually travels, where the pivot point of the suspension is. I think they have really accomplished this whole anti-squat um, with this bike, because per Keith's words, this thing pedals like a beast going uphill, especially for the amount of travel that it's got. He actually says that he thinks it pedals better. Now this is all marginal, but then the Maestro suspension. Now the Maestro is lighter, so this is all trade-offs. You know, speaking about weight, when this bike came right out of the box, this was the two-star version, and it was a hoss. I mean, it was well over 30 pounds. Now with all of his stuff on it, it got it down to like 27-ish, 28, which is pretty respectable for a bike this size. That's n that is nothing to bat an eye at. And of course, this bike's uh, travel. The helm, he reduced down to about a 140, I believe. That's one beautiful thing about the Kang Creek stuff. You can, they're super, super freaking adjustable. The flip chip, it also makes it to where you can put this bike in a low and a high setting. Basically, if you're in the high setting, which is where Keith is going to run this bike predominantly, it's going to give the bike a uh, 66 degree head tube angle, which isn't, I mean, that's still pretty dang good. Uh, in the low setting, it's gonna be a 65 degree head tube angle, but in the low setting, it drops the bottom bracket by seven millimeters. It, just perusing around on the internet because Keith hasn't really played around with the low setting too much. If you're not careful, you're gonna be hitting pedals, uh, you know, striking them on rocks and roots. So in, in my opinion, because I was very skeptical when it came to anything like uh, Niner, because back in the day, like I told you before, 
Uh, Niner was strictly like a rowdy 29er, and that's all they did. And you can read this all over the internet. I think especially with this bike though, Niner kept a lot of their rowdiness, but they made the bike more pedalable, if that's even a word. Now, and, and Keith's, he's been riding this bike for a couple months now, so he's got a lot of time on it. When I asked him the cons of the bike, there's only two things he could come up with. Now he says that he doesn't think the weight is a huge detriment to the bike. I would say it probably weighs a pound more than what he was riding that was comparable in geometry and suspension. So it's not, I mean, a pound is nothing, really, in the scheme of things. The only other big thing that it does is the way the rear end of that bike is with its uh, bridges on the rear triangle, uh, it is a leaf magnet, and that's more of an annoyance than really a terrible critique of the bike. So to me, if the worst thing you can say about a bicycle is that it loves to attract leaves right down there in front of that <laughs> rear wheel, that's nothing, right? Um, and that's only a specific time of year, and right now we have been surfing the leaves like crazy. A lot of these trails, around here at least, they blow them off. It's not like that's a big deal, it's just an observation. I guess. Taking a step back and looking at our conversation that was ruined because of my idiocy and terrible audio, uh, Keith really likes the bike. He would give the bike a, a great review. I think if we are going to start doing this one to 10 scale right now, I always wanna put a preface on the amount of time had on a bike, uh, but I think he would rate this bike around like an eight out of 10. I hope I showed you all a little bit about Niner bicycles. I wanted to take this video as an opportunity to teach myself about them because I wasn't super educated with Niner. I've worked on their product before, but I've never actually, you know, dove head first. That's why I never had a big opinion on them. So if you're new to the channel, I ask if you would and you enjoy this content, like, subscribe, definitely hit the bell notification. Long story short, if you're somebody like me and I don't have the time right now to continuously do four videos a week, it's hard to get in the whole YouTube algorithm thing. So doing a video a week is kind of my limit. I wish I could do more, but I'm just not able to right now. Hitting the bell notification alerts you every single time I come out with something new. So if you would, please hit those things. And I love you all. I will see you in the next one.